The truth is that everyone has the potential to become wealthy, but some people's behaviors are impeding their ability to do so. Fortunately, you can modify your behavior and build actual riches if you can identify and rectify these poor habits. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we'll look at money habits that keep you poor. So make sure to stay until the end of the video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell to keep updated with all our videos. Have you ever wondered what happened to all of your money? Do you ever wonder why your bank account is empty at the end of each month? Have you ever been concerned about the hidden loopholes through which your money disappears? If that's the case, you've come to the correct place. We can tell you exactly why you cannot accumulate wealth while having a good income. Number 1. Impulse Purchases Those who are continually in financial difficulty are more likely to grab something regardless of whether it is on sale or not, even if the purchase was not intended. In fact, impulse purchases can lead to a variety of problems. For starters, many people may explain their impulse purchases by claiming that they earned the item or that it is a need rather than a desire. Second, putting these impulse purchases on a credit card could result in the person paying for the item without having the means to repay the expense. Finally, these haphazard purchases make sticking to your budget much more difficult. To make matters worse, many people will continue to spend after recognizing that their budget has been blown. Even though they have failed to stick to their budget, don't get us wrong, an occasional impulse purchase will not jeopardize your chances of ever getting wealthy. But as you can see, problems begin to compound when you spend outside of your budget. Say the following statement to yourself every day as a best practice. I'd only buy what I need. You'll be a much more mindful spender before you realize it. And this restraint from making spontaneous purchases will have your bank account rising in no time. Number 2. Using credit cards frequently just for the points. Not every reward credit card is bad. In fact, when used carefully, some can be a valuable addition to your wallet. On the other hand, credit card issuers offer those benefits for a reason. And it's not because they're nice people. Simply put, rewards motivate you to spend more. According to a 2010 study presented at an American Economic Association meeting, simply using a reward or points-based credit card with a 1% return boosted monthly spending by $68, while overall credit card debt increased by $115 per month. Suddenly, that point-gathering strategy doesn't look so smart while you might get some cash back on your purchase. Many credit cards have tight rules. You might not be earning back as much as you think, thanks to annual restrictions and higher cash back rates only for specific expenditures, like gas and groceries. Going deeper into debt is simply not worth it. Searching for the elusive credit card point. Number 3. Competing with others Real estate brokers frequently argue that being the worst property on the finest street is preferable to being the best house on the worst street. When your neighbors appear have everything, the desire to acquire the best house in the best neighborhood can eclipse your financial expertise. Keeping up with the Joneses or competing against family members, neighbors, or friends is a psychological trigger that can lead to overspending. While some people are unconcerned about how they compare to others, it can be a significant hardship for some families. When a friend buys a new car or house, goes on a lavish vacation, or even wears pricey jewelry, it can provoke competitive behavior that leads to poor financial decisions. It's crucial to keep in mind that success can be difficult to assess from the outside. Remind yourself of your priorities and aspirations when you see a neighbor arrive in a flashy new car. No one can see your retirement account balance, but you know that you're trying to ensure a comfortable future for yourself by contributing to it instead of buying that new watch. Number 4. Using Retail Therapy as a Coping Mechanism While some people get stress relief through exercising or listening to music, others find it through shopping. Like other activities like exercise, sex, and even eating chocolate, shopping can cause endorphins to be released in the brain. Unfortunately, spending money to feel good can become addictive just like those three things. Shopping to lift your spirits establishes a relationship between happiness and the acquisition of material objects, which can be difficult to sever. So, how widespread is this problem? 
According to a 2016 research done by Ebates, the pioneer and leader in online cashback purchasing, retail therapy is practiced by 96% of adults and 95% of teens. Entertainment, travel, and electronics were the most popular forms of therapy for these people. Needless to say, such spending influences almost everyone. Of course, if you can't control your emotional spending, you may require professional assistance. Shopping addiction is real and tough to overcome, but with the aid of a qualified mental health professional, you can identify your triggers and develop coping skills to help you stay out of debt. Do we mean to imply that all shopping is bad? Obviously not. You just cannot do it to make you feel better after a difficult day. Find additional low-cost ways to relieve stress and improve happiness, and you'll have the same outcome without breaking the bank. Enjoying the video so far? Stay tuned till the end to see all the habits you should avoid to save money. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Number 5. Expecting a Miracle People who are continually in debt believe that fixing their finances will require a financial miracle. You won't be able to get out of debt by winning the lottery, inheriting a large sum of money from a wealthy relative, or having the best-paying job in the world fall into your lap. This mode of thinking takes you out of control, making it extremely dangerous. You're handing up the financial steering wheel and emotionally cutting yourself off from your debt when you wait for someone else to come along and save you from your poor behavior. We all know that your credit, debt, and lifestyle are solely your responsibility and that you are the only one who can fix the situation. In reality, one of the keys to financial well-being is a sense of control. Many things in life are beyond your control, as you can see. For example, it's easy to become disappointed when things don't go your way because you have little control over the economy or the job market. Allow yourself to make a decision on something you do have control over to prevent feeling defeated. One modest way you can have some control over your finances is to save. Making choices that indicate to ourselves that we are in charge of our lives motivates us. The particular decision we make is less important than asserting power. To put it another way, it's not about the $5 you save or the extra $25 you decide to put toward your debt. This psychological ploy is extremely effective because you are the one deciding in the first place. So, Rather than waiting for a miracle, start reading your invoices and creating a budget. Set up payment plans to keep current, pay all new bills on time, and remember that while you're in debt, you're the one who suffers. Number 6. Succumbing to Lifestyle Inflation You presumably expect to have a better financial situation as you get older than you had as a young adult. A better job, a raise, or even natural economic inflation can affect your earning capacity. The difference between individuals who are successful in developing their money and those who are constantly struggling is how they manage their income and expenses. It's tempting to invest these extra funds on a new home, a vacation, or simply raising your daily spending, but doing so could put you right back where you started. Consider the following scenario. Who is actually in a better financial situation if Bill earns $60,000 per year and spends $45,000? while Jeff earns $150,000 and spends $175,000. Even though Bill earns less, earnings aren't the main key to accumulating wealth. It's all about how you handle your money. Unfortunately, lifestyle inflation is a normal element of earning more and advancing up the corporate ladder for most people. But it's only acceptable if you stay within your budget. It becomes troublesome as soon as you start going into debt to afford a specific way of life. Maintain your essential financial freedom by just spending what you can afford. Number 7. Taking Interest-Free Loans Stores that offer no-interest loans, like credit cards that offer points and prizes, simply draw in potential borrowers and persuade them to spend more than they can afford. The terrible aspect is that many people who take advantage of such deals don't pay off their loans before the interest-free term expires and are then hit with fines and even retroactive interest from the interest-free period. Always read the fine print and keep in mind that interest-free loans aren't really interest-free until you're certain you'll be able to pay it off before the grace period ends. Number 8. Paying the Minimum 
Paying the bare minimum each month won't get you out of debt. In fact, minimum payments are sometimes calculated to be around 4% to 6% of your balance, which might mean you are staying in debt and incurring more interest. When you get your credit card statement, keep in mind that you owe the entire total, not just the minimum payment. What bad money habits do you have that you want to change? Do you find it on this list? Tell us in the comments section below. Please check out our other videos if you like this one. Until then, stay tuned.